Hi everyone, in this video we are going to look at dimensioning. Now, adding dimensions is another word for adding sizes or measurements to our drawings. And we add these sizes or these dimensions to our drawings to show what size objects are. It's really important that these sizes are accurate and can be easily understood so that other people can use our dimensions to manufacture objects or just to understand our drawings in general. So all of our dimensions must be drawn to British standards. Now British standards is like our language for graphic communication. It's our set of rules that we follow and it means that people around the world can understand our drawings and understand how we set them out or laid them out or the sizes that we're using. Now what that means is all our dimensions have to be drawn and laid out the same way. But because our dimensions will always be in millimetres and we'll have part of our title block shown that it's in millimetres, you don't have to add mm beside every size. It means people can understand automatically what unit of measurement you've used. Now as part of British standards, we have lots of rules for how we dimension an object, how we add sizes to our drawings. And one of the first ones is that each dimension only needs to be shown on the drawing once. So using the example down at the bottom, the object is 50 millimetres in length from left to right. It means we only need to add that 50 millimetres in once. We don't need to show it at the top and the bottom. The same way that the measurement on the right hand side, the 25, doesn't need to be shown on the left hand side as well. We always try and place our dimensions on our drawing so we can read them from the bottom of the page, so looking at it landscape, or from the right hand side of the page if we were to turn it round through 90 degrees. So what this means is our numbers sit in a consistent position. So we normally look at a drawing sheet in A3 landscape view. This means looking at the 50 millimetres, it sits on top of the line. However, the 25 sits to the left of the line. But when we rotate the page 90 degrees, we turn our page to the right 90 degrees, that 25 would also be positioned on top of the line in the centre. You'll notice as well the position of the numbers are in the centre just above the dimension line. They don't touch the outlines of the object, they don't touch the dimension line, or they don't touch things like centre lines or leader lines. Now, the leader lines are those small lines that go from the edge of the arrow down to our object, and we'll talk about them in a little bit more detail. Circles and arcs are dimensioned slightly differently. To show that something is circular, we use the little symbol, which is a circle with a diagonal line through it, looking a little bit like a letter Q. That shows that it is a diameter, and we put that symbol to show that the measurement from a circle, from one side of the circle, through the centre, to the other. That's only used though for complete circles. If we have an incomplete circle, so a curve, an arc, or just a little radius like the one shown on the right of the screen, we use the symbol for radius, which is a capital R, which is a little bit different from what you would normally use in maths, where you might use a small r to show the radius. Now the radius is from the edge of the curve to where the centre of it would be as if it was circular. But if we've got an incomplete curve, we use radius, and if we've got a full circle, we use diameter. Some other rules are more about organisation. So dimensions should not interfere with the shape of the object. Wherever possible, we want to avoid writing our dimensions on top of the object. That means keeping leader lines and arrows and dimension numbers, dimension values, out of the object. So we'd want to position it out to the left in this case, not sitting on top of it like shown on the right. The leader lines also don't touch the object. Now the reason for this is to make sure that nobody confuses the leader lines for being part of the object. And lastly, what we also need to remember is that the arrowheads should be small, they should be neat, they should be slim, and they should be filled in as well. It shouldn't be open arrowheads. They should be closed off, they should be coloured in, and they don't need to be really large in size. Now, we can organise dimensions in different ways, and two of our main ways of doing this are chain dimensioning and parallel dimensioning. And it's all just about how we organise them. At the top, you'll see an example of chain dimensioning, where we've got the 25 values listed from left to right, one after the other. Now the reason it's called chain dimensioning is because each one of those dimensions shares a leader line, the arrowheads touch each other, and it looks like they're linked together in one long chain. Actually, in this example, we wouldn't need to have the 100 dimension value positioned above because we've got the 425s, which show exactly how long the object is. For parallel dimensioning, it's about organizing the dimensions with the smallest value closest to the object, and the largest values further away from the object. So you can see it's increasing in size here, 10, 20, and 30, but each time this, the values are positioned in a sensible logical order. And the reason for this is so that different leader lines don't cross over each other. If we'd put the 10 further away than the 20, the leader lines from the 10 would actually have crossed right through 
the value of the 20 and it would mean that people would become confused about where a size starts and where it finishes. You'll also notice in this example that the leader lines extend over the object and this is okay but it's really important to make sure that those leader lines don't touch the object even when they cross over to make sure that no one thinks it's actually part of the object. So these are a range of our rules for adding dimensions to a drawing. It's really important you pay attention to these and you can refer to this video at any time, but now you have the opportunity to try and add dimensions to your own drawings for yourself. So what we've got here is a little example of a drawing that has had British standards dimensions applied to it and you can see that dimensions have been placed in a really organised logical fashion around it to comply with British standards and I'm going to talk you through a couple of them really quickly. So first of all we'll look at the position of the leader lines and the dimension lines themselves. So you'll notice that the leader lines, these lines here, they don't touch the object and that's consistent all the way around the page at no point do any of those leader lines touch. You'll see that all of the dimension lines touch the leader lines and those arrows are all a consistent size all the way around. So we've tried to make sure that they're all the same size and each time they're filled in, they're coloured in a solid colour rather than being open. Looking now at the dimension values, you'll see that for all the horizontal dimensions, they're all positioned on top of the line. So that 30, 30, 30 and the 90 all sit on top of the line. And that's because we only ever view a page in landscape the way it is just now or by rotating it around 90 degrees to the right. And what you'll see now is that all dimensions that sit horizontal, those numbers all sit on top of the line. So whenever you're doing vertical dimensions, it can help to turn your page round from being horizontal, turning it that 90 degree angle, and then adding in those dimensions. We've also got our two different types of organisation. We've got our chain dimension, where each dimension links to one another, so they share a leader line, and it's one consistent line of dimensions. Or you've got our parallel dimension, where the smallest dimension value is placed closest to the item, and the larger dimension values are placed further away. Now the reason for that is because if I placed the 60 that wee bit closer, and the 30 was further away, that leader line would cross over and it would interfere and it would start to look messy. So that's just a, a, an example there for you to look at to see that this is how you should set your dimension. One thing I will say is that in this example, just to show you the different types of dimension and the different position of the numbers and values, I've had to duplicate a lot of dimensions. For example, that 30 there, if you included that in your drawing, you wouldn't then include it on your end elevation. The same way that if you had those two 30 heights, you wouldn't need to include the 60 because it's different views of the same object. But hopefully now that's a good example for you to use and you can start dimensioning your own drawings.